Morning. Uh, this morning I'm still going through Isaiah 63, 15 through uh, 64, 12. I'm not going to read it this morning. Um, you can read it on your own. But there is something in there I'm still just catching and learning. Um, one of the things that I'm pulling out from this is how how easy it is for us to slip into a habit or a thinking that we can make it without Him. We can make do without Him. Or we can do it in our own strength. And we forget how utterly hopeless and helpless we become without Him. You know, as you look at it, it almost sounds like a uh, codependent relationship that uh, we are, are unhealthily dependent upon God. But the problem isn't that. The problem is our analogy in that. Uh, see, we're unhealthy when we rely on anything but God. And when we come to rely on other people, they're just a poor shadow of what God offers us. And so that's why codependency is so bad, but dependency upon God is so healthy. Um, 1 Corinthians 13 talks about love, real love, the kind of love that isn't uh, skewered to over-feminization or over-masculinity. It's this perfect balance of love, a love that is self-sacrificing but gentle. And uh, I was taught a valuable lesson in love um, by a friend of mine and uh, and he simply taught me the lesson by saying I love you and that was hard for me because when you say you love someone you're willing to sacrifice you're willing to be uncomfortable you're willing for, to set aside what you need in your own mind done or you, what you think should happen in order to meet the needs of somebody else. And so when somebody says, I love you, the real meaning behind all of that is saying, I am willing to set aside myself for you. And so when Christ says, well, to Nicodemus in John 3 16 for God so loved the world God set aside what he would do for the world for you and me because of his love for us and so when we say I love you we're saying that I'm willing to be put out I'm willing to be inconvenienced I'm willing to be uh, setting aside my priorities in order to meet your needs and so in that yesterday when I said it's a little weird to say I love you even though I can't see you and I don't know you I'm also learning how great it is how freeing it is from my own preconceived notions because I'm taking on more of what I am understanding God and I'm also leaving up more of the definition to God and so this morning if you haven't heard the words I love you I want you to hear it from me I love you. I love you not because of what you do for me, not because of who you are to me, but because you, of who you are to Him, who you are to the Father. And though I may not be able to meet all the needs and requirements I've just listed out for love or loving, it doesn't lighten that statement that you are worth loving. You are worthy of love. Not because I say it, and not because you demand it, but because God said He loved you. So I want to encourage you today not to go through and make your ways the priority, but make God's ways the priority. Not to lean into your own understanding of how to approach situations or your own strengths, even that. But to lean into Him and say, God, where is it you need me best today? And know that in, when you do that, you are walking in His love. And you're walking as His agent of love to this world. And so I think that's probably the best thing I can encourage you today. I love you. You're loved. Have a great day.